want to bring some of this to John Sandweg. John's a former acting uh, director at ICE in the Obama administration. I'll talk to you as well about this meeting that's underway at the White House at this hour, see if they can get a border deal done uh, that includes funding for the wars overseas. But any reaction to this back and forth between Texas and the federal government, what's been going on here that Ali was talking about? What's your take on it, if, if you have one? Yeah, once again, I think it's border security that loses, right? Politicians trying to posture each other. You know, and there's probably some confusion about what's really going on and certainly probably some blame on both sides. But the bottom line is border security is more effective and our borders are, are safer when state and federal law enforcement work together. There's a role for state law enforcement at the border, uh, but it needs to be done in coordination and collaboration with the federal government. And when you have both sides or whatever this tension is down there as it relates to the park and the access that the Border Patrol does not appear to have to the to the actual border itself, it's, it's border security that loses. Um, and it's a real shame, if you ask me. And border security is a big part of this conversation. Again, the meeting's underway right now, the congressional leadership and the president, and it's gone beyond that. There are other members of, of Congress, House and Senate from both parties that are there as well. So I don't know if they'll get anything done today. We know the issues. We know that the president might have to give um, on border security a little bit if he wants to get funding for Ukraine, funding for Israel. Here's what Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina, had to say about this a little bit earlier. Let's listen to Senator Graham. Mr. President, there will be no deal. There will be no money for Ukraine, no money for, for Israel, no money for our own needs unless you stop the abuse of parole as well as other things. Without fixing the parole problem, there will be no defense supplemental. All right, so what's he talking about here when it, uh, this asylum parole issue, and is it something where the president maybe could move and compromise? Is there anything from your experience in days at ICE that, they, that where they could move on that? Does it make sense? Yeah, I think, I think the administration, I think the White House is ready to make a deal. I think they want to make a deal. I think the question is how steep of a price are they going to have to pay? I think the White House wants to put this issue to bed and, and get rid of it when we're in election year. And I know the White House views, you know, obviously funding for Ukraine and Israel as critical national security priorities. Now, as it relates to parole, I do think there probably is some room to work something out on the parole issue. What Lindsey, uh, Senator Graham there is referring to, though, is the administration has been issuing special permission for people that in an effort to kind of keep them from coming to the border to say, make an application from your home country and we'll let in a set amount every month. And as you can understand, I think as people, and especially as some of the more hawkish people as it relates to border security, see, see that they see it as a bypassing of our, you know, of our immigration laws, right? That we're just giving a free pass to people who would otherwise, you know, not be eligible to enter the United States. So I, under, I think there's probably room for some sort of deal there. I mm -hmm. guess I'm more concerned, though, about the chances of a broader package, especially given kind of the position of the House. Well, that part, though, to go back for a moment to what you're talking about, uh, which, as you say, is a hawkish approach on immigration, is that something that to you makes sense or, or, or would it go too far if you went that far on the, on, the, on the parole issue? I mean, so I guess it depends on what they do. Listen, I can understand okay. where there's some frustration and concern with this idea that you take 30,000 people a month and you issue a parole kind of, you know, in a way saying, hey, don't come to our border. We'd rather just give you the permission mm -hmm. because it does feel like a workaround amongst, you know, some of our refugee laws and some of our, you know, existing immigration laws. On the other hand, though, listen, parole is a critical tool and you really don't want the administration to lose flexibility for it. There are humanitarian cases every day where someone shows up without a visa at the border, but they have an urgent crisis going on and it's the right thing to do to give them temporary permission into the country. It's also a critical tool for law enforcement. Whenever we want to extradite a suspect into the United States or some sort of cooperating confidential informant, we use parole authority. So I worry that a broad elimination of this parole authority, which is this executive's ability to give permission to let someone come into the country. Broad elimination of that would not be good for anybody. Right. But I think some reasonable restrictions on the way it's currently being used um, certainly should be part of any deal if it means funding for Ukraine and Israel. These numbers that are on the on the screen while John is speaking kind of illustrate that Americans do see this situation, the border situation, as a quote unquote crisis, up to 45 percent. As the, the figure showed you a little while ago, that was 38 percent. In previous polling from CBS, it's gone up to 45. So it's more and more people are, are seeing this as a, as a bigger and bigger issue. What were you saying, though, about the House Republicans? There's a concern there that no matter what, it won't, that nothing's getting done. Is that what you meant in your previous comment or? I just worry that the price that they're going to want from the Biden administration is going to be more than the administration is willing to pay. I think, Connor, look, yeah. the administration has signaled it's willing to make some substantive changes to our asylum processes in this country. 
In doing that, they really are taking a lot of um, flack, if you will, from their left flank, right, from the immigration advocacy groups and some of the progressive groups that generally support the president. I think the president is banking on this idea that, hey, if we implement these changes, the numbers will go down at the border. The crisis you know, will dissipate. It won't be an election issue. And those progressive groups that might be frustrated mm -hmm. with me today, when they're faced with an alternative, let's say it's, you know. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.